Why do all these stories about cheating wives sound so trite? Same old synopsis. I came home early, found an email, caught her with her lover at the office. Christmas party. Happened to drive by the motel and saw her car parked outside the room. There must be other ways in which a cuckold husband finds out about his wife's infidelity. At least you would think so. But maybe not. Maybe there are only half a dozen ways in which a man comes to the realization that his marriage has simply collapsed. I know that in my case, I was so in love with my wife of ten years that it took a lightning strike for me to realize what had been going on between my wife and her lover for the past six months. I had no idea. Shannon and I met in college our sophomore year, and we were immediately attracted to each other. She had rich blonde hair and blue eyes, a beautiful face, and a slender body with long legs. In short, she was perfect, at least to me. But for all that, there was about her. I fell in love with her at first sight. She was smart, simpering, and fun. I could talk to her for hours about anything in the world. We became best friends, and after three months of Shannon being together, we opened up in new ways, if you know what I mean. At that point, it was the highlight of my life. It was awkward and awkward from that moment on. I no longer doubted that Shannon and I would be together forever, or, as it turned out, for ten years. My name is Stuart Gray, but everyone calls me Stu. I was born and raised in a medium-sized town in the Midwest. My height is six feet, and my weight is 187. I'm considered a pretty good-looking man with brown eyes and sandy hair. I am a contractor by trade. I have my own small company with a permanent staff of five people. We do mostly interior remodeling for those who can afford it, and our work is considered excellent. Shannon teaches music at a local high school, and together we make a very good living, have a beautiful home, and since we are both in our thirties, we plan to start a family in the very near future. As I said, we have enjoyed a wonderful first ten years of marriage. We cuddled every night. It was an unbreakable rule. And every morning when I woke up next to Shannon, I marveled at how beautiful she was and how lucky I was to have her as my wife. I can honestly say that while I would rather live every day with her, if I had to give my life for her, I would do so without hesitation. I probably should have made that last statement in the past tense as something so unexpected and emotionally overwhelming happened to me unexpectedly that I still to this day cannot say I have fully recovered from it. As a contractor in the Midwest, most of our work is in the spring, summer, and fall. People just don't like the interior of their homes being torn apart when it's five degrees outside and there's three feet of snow on the ground. So Shannon and I's vacations usually fell during the Christmas and New Year's vacations, as well as spring break in the summer when I was busy making money. Shannon would sometimes take a week to visit family, go shopping with her two sisters, or take a couple of summer courses to support her teaching degree. Our favorite trip each winter was somewhere warm, and in the winter of our demise, we chose an all-inclusive resort in the Bahamas. Two weeks in paradise for the two of us to reconnect in body and spirit. However, I soon discovered how misguided that thought was. First of all, I should explain that before Shannon and I boarded the plane in Minneapolis, not only did I have no idea, but I would have called you a liar and spit in your face if you dared to hint that there was anything wrong with our marriage. We were the perfect couple, so madly in love and deeply connected in every way, that it felt as if the two of us were one person fused in two bodies. Our union was so strong that nothing in heaven or earth could come between us. I guess I had forgotten that there was a heck too, and though I didn't know it at the time, I was standing on the edge of the abyss, ready to fall into the molten abyss. The first time I felt something was wrong was when I went through security at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. The line was long, a lot of people trying to change from extreme cold to tropical warmth and as Shannon and I waited in line to go through the scanners, I noticed the man in line next to us look at Shannon. It wasn't unusual. My wife is a flamboyant woman, and men often cast slightly lustful glances at her. But this looked different, like he was trying to get her attention. I wanted to know more, so I pretended to look at my boarding pass while I watched the guy out of the corner of my eye. His glances in her direction were furtive, to say the least. And then I caught it. A quick glance from Shannon to him, and a barely perceptible flick of her hand, as if she were saying, Not now. He smiled, nodded, 
and I nearly lost my breakfast. I was stunned. It was then I realized that these two knew each other. How? Well, I didn't know, but that knowledge served as a red flag. As we went through security, I watched them closely, and neither of them made any further attempt to make contact. I know I had become very quiet, but Shannon somehow didn't notice it. Apparently, her thoughts were preoccupied with something else. I had hoped that this man, whoever he was, was not on our plane. But as we boarded and took our seats, I saw that I was mistaken. He was sitting in an aisle seat about fifteen rows in front of us. Another thing that struck me as odd was that Shannon decided she wanted an aisle seat in our row. That never happens. She always wants to sit by the window. But not this time. I asked her what was the matter, since I had reserved a window seat for her in advance, giving myself a middle seat. But she simply said that she didn't like her breakfast and didn't want to bother anyone if she needed to use the restroom. I asked the woman sitting in the aisle seat if she would mind taking the window seat, and when I explained that my wife had stomach problems, she readily agreed and the exchange was made. I don't usually have trouble sleeping on an airplane, and the long flight between Minneapolis and Miami would have given me the opportunity to do so. But in my heightened state of anxiety, there was no way I was going to sleep on this flight, even though I was going to pretend to. We stowed our bags in the overhead garbage can, and Shannon put her purse under the seat in front of her. Once we were in the air, I pulled out my twin's baseball cap, pulled it over my forehead, and pretended to fall asleep. I left myself enough room to keep an eye on Shannon, and after fifteen minutes, she looked up at me, and after making sure I was asleep, got up and headed down the aisle toward the restrooms. I moved to my seat so I could see the full length of the aisle, and noticed that as she passed the seat occupied by what I now assumed was her acquaintance, she reached out as if to hold on, and lightly touched the guy's shoulder. Further proof that there was something between them, and it wasn't all coincidental. I noted that they didn't look at each other, and Shannon headed for the restroom. When she came out a few minutes later, she looked right at him, and he stood up and walked over to her. When they met in the aisle, instead of one of them turning aside so the other could pass, they found themselves face to face and stopped for a moment. He put his hand on her waist, and she spoke to him. They both smiled warmly, and as she continued on to her aisle seat, that was all I needed to realize that these two had known each other for a while, and were obviously close on some level. At the same time, the realization hit me like a ton of bricks that my wonderful marriage was in real jeopardy and could very well end. I was suddenly so irritated that I had to turn away from Shannon as she sat down and buckled her seatbelt. How could she do this to me? To us? How long has this been going on? Who was this person, and how far had their relationship gone? For the rest of the flight, I tried to make sense of everything I had seen and prayed that when we transferred to our flight to Nassau, he wouldn't be on it. But somehow I knew he would be, much to my dismay. I turned out to be right. As soon as Shannon and I boarded the plane, I saw him sitting five rows behind us. He was reading the in-flight magazine and paid no attention to us as we took our seats. Shannon, who was obviously no longer plagued by stomach problems, took her usual seat by the window. The flight to Nassau went without incident, and after landing, we picked up our luggage, rented a car, and headed to the resort. While I was driving, Shannon was texting. Who are you texting with? Just to my mom and sisters to let them know we made it. Yeah, maybe, I thought, but I'd like to see for myself. Isn't it strange how when suspicions start, they snowball? Our room was lovely, with a balcony overlooking the ocean and one of the pools. As we unpacked, I realized I had to make a statement to win my wife back. So I walked over to Shannon and said, Do you realize how much I love you? I love you too, baby. She said there was a strange light in her eyes, like she wasn't in the room with me. You know I'd never do anything bad for you, don't you, Shannon? She flinched slightly. I know that, Stu and I know you would never do anything to hurt me or our wonderful marriage, I told her. And she flinched again, and I saw moisture trickle into her eyes. Of course, Stu, you know I won't. But she didn't look at me. She just stared at the floor. I realized then that I had probably lost the battle if she hadn't already done it. I knew now that she would soon give herself to another man. I let her go and quickly went to the bathroom, 
hoping I wouldn't lose her before I got there. I sat in the bathroom for a few minutes, regaining my composure and asking myself the same questions over and over again. How did this happen? What did I done to bring her into the arms of another man? Why hadn't I noticed anything a few weeks or months ago? But most importantly, what can I do to stop her from destroying us completely? Or is it too late? I washed my face and walked out of the bathroom. Shannon was standing there with a strange look on her face. Oh my god, Stu, I just got my period and I didn't bring anything with me. What said I my period, Stu? It just started. But you got it a week ago. How could it start again? I don't know. But sometimes it happens. Maybe the excitement over the vacation led to it. I need to go down to the gift store and get some tampons. And she left, closing the door behind her. My first thought was that maybe this was a good thing. It would slow down the romance between her and her boyfriend, whoever he was. My second thought was, wait a minute. This just doesn't make sense. In all our years together, this had never happened to her. She was on birth control pills, and her periods were always regular, like clockwork. Then why would she make it up? Unless... Unless she thought her period would stop me from pursuing her so she could devote all her love and passion to her new man. That's the way it should be. And if it is, she's not the woman I married. No one can be that conniving and cruel. She must really hate me, since she let me plan and pay for this trip, to cut me out of her life and give everything she has to a man I've never even met. I felt completely lost, like I was going crazy. Who was this woman I had loved with all my heart for over a decade? As I looked around the room, I saw that she had left her cell phone next to the TV. I turned it on, not knowing if she had changed the passcode, and found that she hadn't. Another mistake on her part. I went into her messages and read the latest from one Anthony Eisner. I scrolled back to the beginning of the thread, which started when we were driving in the car to the resort. Anthony. Hey, baby, I can't wait to have you at our place. Shannon, you little brat, you almost got us caught by Stu at the airport. Anthony, I couldn't resist, Shannon. I almost kissed you on the plane when we were standing in the aisle. Shannon, Stu was sound asleep, so you could have, but it might look bad to others. I got to go. We're almost there. The conversation between the two resumed once we were in our room at the resort. Anthony, I'm in the lobby. Are you here yet? Shannon, in my room. Stu's in the bathroom. He's acting weird. Anthony, who cares? When are you going to dump Stu so I can have you to myself? I told you from the first time we were together that I can't and won't do it. Tony, Stu is a wonderful husband. He loves me, takes care of me, and gives me a life that you could never provide. Anthony, but you know what I'm better at. Shannon, ha ha, yeah, you're better at that. But I need more than that. And Stu gives me that. Stu and I are getting ready to start a family, so the next two weeks are just for you, baby. I told Stu that I would stop taking birth control pills when we got home, but I actually stopped taking them almost three weeks ago. So now you have a chance to give me your baby, which Stu will raise thinking it's his baby. Anthony, you're so mean, Jan, but I love it. But what if he gets you pregnant? Shannon, I'll tell him that I got my period again, and oddly enough, it'll be coming the whole time we're on vacation. Anthony, are you sure he's going to buy that? Shannon, of course he is. He loves me, and he knows I would never lie to him. Besides, when we get home, I'll make it up to him. Anthony, darn, he's so dumb. What a loser. I stood there in complete shock, started to change her phone, and stopped. There is a possibility that I will find a way to use these messages as evidence in the divorce. I started to change her phone to my own, and then thought, screw her. My phone has all my personal information on it. She made this mess on her own. Let her try to find a way out of it. So I kept both of our phones. I figured it wouldn't take her long to realize her phone was missing, but by then, I'd be long gone. I could feel the bile rising in my throat, causing me to gag. I walked over to the window and looked out at the beautiful Caribbean Sea. Eight hours ago... I was the happiest man on earth, preparing for two weeks of romance under the tropical sun, with the love of my life, my wife, my soulmate, and now my world was crumbling around me. I had never felt so alone, overwhelmed and angry in my life, 
I wanted to hurt them both, to destroy them, for making such a pathetic fool of me. Thankfully, the rational side of my brain gradually took over. Divorce was a sure thing. There was no way I would stay with the cheating wife who was my loving wife. But I wanted more than that. I wanted revenge. Looking out the window, I happened to glance at the pool. And there they were, arms wrapped tightly around each other. I wanted to throw up, but instead I took a deep breath and grabbed my DVR, which I had bought specifically for this trip, but was now using it to record their actions. I guess while Shannon was unpacking, she never bothered to look out the window of our room, or she would have noticed the pool in plain sight. The camera had a decent zoom, so I was able to get some good close-ups. I hated looking at it, but I would use it against them later. I needed a plan and fast, but my stomach was cramping and my brain was blocked. Then it occurred to me how she was going to spend time with her lover, if I was around. They must have a plan to keep me occupied while the two of them are together. While I was thinking about it, a simple thought occurred to me. Shannon wanted to spend two weeks with her lover Anthony to get her pregnant, and I wanted revenge. So why not do it now, instead of waiting and ruining their plans? First, I had to figure out a way for them to keep me occupied while they entertained each other. I was still taking notes when I saw them kissing one more time, and then Shannon quickly turned and left. She would be back in our room any minute, and I needed to get my emotions under control. So I went back into the bathroom and started the shower to try and relax. If she asked why, I would just say it was to help me relax after the flight and I wanted to get rid of the airplane smell. Five minutes later, I heard the door to our room open and close. I'm back, she exclaimed. I brought us some water. Great. I'll be out of the shower in a minute. Why did she bring us water? The resort has bottled water in all the rooms. And then it hit me. She was going to pump me full of sleeping pills. And this was going to be it. I started thinking about what I should do if I don't drink the water she bought me. She'll realize that I might suspect something if I drink the water. And she turns out to be this. I'll go out, and she and her lover will go back to her room. What to do? I turned off the shower and slowly dried myself off, puzzling over what to do. Then there was a knock on the door from Shannon. Are you okay? You've been in there for a while. Her voice was full of concern. I couldn't help but wonder if she was worried about me, or if she was worried that she might be late for her important date. My anger started to rise again, but I fought for composure. When I opened the door and saw her standing by the bed, drinking from a water bottle, she held out the second one to me, and I noticed it was already open. We need to drink water with this climate change. She looked me in the eye and quickly looked away. I took the bottle and pretended to take a big sip then turned and walked back to the bathroom. Quickly, but quietly, I spit the water into the sink and emptied the bottle, grabbing one of the water bottles from the bathroom counter. I filled the empty bottle Shannon had given me when I returned to the room. She was busy unpacking and arranging things in drawers and hanging clothes in the closet, so I was sure she hadn't seen me splash the water or fill the bottle once out of the bathroom. I continued to drink the water. I started looking around our room and noticed that she had laid out a red dress. Is that what you plan on wearing for dinner? If we can't get into it, it'll be unnecessary. You know how much I love this dress. Saying that, I realized she was dressing for him, not me. Well, I brought it, so I might as well wear it. She smiled. Aren't you tired after all that traveling? You must be exhausted. Bingo. I thought this jerk had really gotten me watered down. But how was I going to play it off? I needed more proof of their affair, so I pretended I wanted to sleep. I took another sip of water and lowered my eyes, as if I was tired. In reality, I felt like I just drank several cans of Red Bull. My heart was pounding in my chest, and it took all my self-control to feign sleepiness. Now that you mention it, I'm a little tired. What time should we be ready for dinner? I asked a little lazily. They won't start dinner for a couple of hours. Why don't you lie down and rest for a while? I'll wake you up when it's time to get ready. She said it with such sincerity that I almost believed her. I yawned. Okay, sweetie. I could use the rest. Just don't let me sleep too long. I want to spend as much time with you as possible. I love you so much. 
I saw her flinch as if I'd hit some nerve. I love you too. She said it with less conviction. I laid down on the bed and very slowly began to pretend like I was falling asleep. Soon, I was snoring softly, and I heard Shannon pull out her phone to make a call. Hey, it worked. He's passed out. How long is he going to sleep? Then we have a whole night together. She giggled, and I almost gibbered, but managed to maintain the illusion that I was asleep. Meet me at the Sandpiper Bar in an hour. I want to freshen up a bit. She giggled again. You're so bad. I can't wait, lover. Bye. She hung up and continued to get ready for her big night. I stared at her, barely opening my eyes. What a fool. The anger was building up inside me again, but I tried my best not to show it. She continued to get ready, then went into the bathroom and started showering. I knew she would be in there for about ten minutes, so as soon as I heard the shower door close, I quickly got up and went to her purse. I started looking in it for sleeping pills or whatever she had put in the water bottle she had given me. I came across a pill bottle that had no label indicating what was in it. I opened it and found a dozen or so small whitish capsules. This must be what she had put in my water. So I carefully shook out about five pills and put the pill bottle back in my purse. I then grabbed a Kleenex and wrapped the pills up before putting them in the pocket of the shorts I was wearing. Quickly walking back to the bed, I heard her turn off the water in the shower. I laid down as I was and continued to doze off while she finished getting ready for her date. It took her another 45 minutes to get ready, but as soon as she was out the door, I was already up and dressed as fast as I could. As I laid there, I had time to devise a plan. One I needed to get more video evidence of them being together to ruin their plans for the rest of the trip. I wasn't sure how I was going to pull it off, but I knew both of them would end up in dire straits. The third was to return home a few days earlier than our trip was supposed to end and begin divorce proceedings. I wanted to be done with Shannon before she could do anything to stop or slow me down, like emptying our bank accounts and canceling all of our credit cards. No, that was supposed to be me doing that, not her. As soon as I got dressed, I grabbed the video camera I had used earlier that day and headed out the door. It could work in low light. At least, that's what the commercial said. I was going to have to figure that out as I made my way to the bar. The resort wasn't that big, and there were only two bars, both facing the ocean. But Sandpiper was the larger of the two, and had a dance floor. I managed to find a strategic spot behind some low palm trees that gave me a full view of the bar, but was far enough away from it that I couldn't be seen. Thanks to the zoom lens on my camera, I got a very good video. The bar wasn't too crowded, which made it easy for me to spot my victim. She was wearing that darn red dress that I used to love, but now it made me blaze with anger and hatred. He wrapped his arms around her, and it took all my self-control and willpower not to run up to the jerk and destroy him. I had to remind myself that I was here to get evidence not to end up in jail. I started recording the two of them, acting like two lovers in the Caribbean. They laughed and kissed, like lovers do, like Shannon and I did. After about an hour, the DJ turned on the music, and they started dancing. After watching them dance together on the dance floor for another hour, I couldn't take it anymore, and was about to go back to our room. My room alone. And then I noticed the two of them walking quickly off the dance floor. I cautiously moved after them, keeping my distance so as not to be seen. Soon, they reached his room, which was in the back of the resort. It was smaller than ours, and was on the first floor with no ocean view. This guy must be on a tight budget, I thought. They entered his room, and I quickly moved closer to see if I could get a peek inside. Luckily, the curtains weren't completely closed, and the window was slightly ajar so I could hear their conversation and record everything that was being said. I was videotaping everything. Absolutely everything. It was nearing midnight, and I was already thinking she was about to leave him to be with me. But then I heard their conversation. Are you sure these pills are safe? She asked with some concern in her voice. How touching. Don't worry about him, baby. He'll sleep for at least another six hours. He may wake up with a slight headache, but nothing more than that. You only used one pill, right? Yeah, just one. Why? What would two have done? I don't want him to feel bad. Jerk laughed. No, no. Don't worry. 
If you gave him two, he'd pass out for twelve hours or more. No, just keep giving him one before bed, and we can spend every night together. I want you to be pregnant by the time we leave. Here's an extra key card to my room, if you manage to get away from him during the day. Call me, and we'll meet back here. Then they both laughed, and it filled me with such rage that I threw up. I had heard and seen enough for one night, so I quietly left and went back to my room. Now I had to plan how to destroy them both and make them feel the pain they had caused me. It was clear that she was going to try to spend every night with him, so the first thing I was going to do was change those plans. Back in my room, I went over what I had written down, as hard as it was to look at. I began to put together a plan that I hoped would completely ruin their fun. First, I had to figure out how to separate them so I could peek at the boy in love and find out what he was up to. I decided to take him alone, maybe even give them water like Shannon did to me, and then beat the crap out of him while he was unconscious. He wouldn't be able to identify his attacker, and that way, I could walk away from scot-free. Now the question was, how do I get those two apart? And that's when I came up with the idea of giving Shannon a spa day. There was a spa at the resort that offered massages, facials, and even makeup. It would be easy to buy a package deal and give it to her as a gift to show her how much I loved her. If she tried to refuse, I would tell her the money was non-refundable and put a huge guilt trip on her to get her to go like she has done with me in the past. There's no way she could not accept my gift, and it would keep her busy for at least a couple hours. That would give me plenty of time to give my lover the whipping he so deserved. I changed into shorts and went back to bed. As I lay there sleepless, all I could think about was the two of them together and how I was going to kick that jerk's butt. It was about five inches the morning when Shannon finally came back into the room. She quietly changed her clothes and then climbed into bed and snuggled up against me. I felt like pushing her away again, but I remained still, as if I were asleep, and waited for the right moment to wake up. A little after seven in the morning, I started to move and slowly pretended to wake up. Shannon was sound asleep, so I got up and took a quick shower, and then went in search of a spa. I was hoping they would be open early, so I could get her a package that would keep her occupied long enough for me to get some things done. I also wanted to see if I could catch a flight home late the next morning or early afternoon. It didn't take me long at all to find the spa, and seeing that it was open, I went inside to see what they were offering in the way of package deals. There was a pleasant young woman behind the counter who helped me choose a package deal. I was more interested in how long the treatments would take rather than what they were for. After choosing a package that lasted about three hours, I asked what was the earliest time she could book it for. The woman checked her computer and said 2 p.m. was the first available time she had. I thought about it for a while and then decided to grab a package and surprise my wife. With that done, I headed out to check out the grounds, figuring that Shannon needed some sleep since the previous night spent with her lover had probably exhausted her. Around nine in the morning, I returned to the room and found her still sound asleep, so I rummaged through her purse and found her cell phone. I checked her text messages and read one from him that he had sent in the last hour. Anthony, you were great last night. Any chance of getting away from Stu to have some fun during the day? My anger was coming back, but I held it back. I was good at it, but now I knew the end was near. Shannon hissed, and I put the phone down and kissed her forehead gently. Good morning, sleepyhead. I'm sorry about last night for falling asleep like that and ruining our dinner plans, but I have a surprise for you. She smiled and yawned. What kind of surprise? I booked you a spa day to apologize for last night, and to show you how much I love you. Even in my drowsy state, I saw her flinch slightly, and there was uncertainty in her eyes. At that moment, I realized that she was doubting if she really loved me. I looked into her eyes. Is everything okay? You don't like my gift? Oh no, I love it. I just wish you had asked me first. She smiled weakly. If I had, it wouldn't have been much of a surprise. Look, it's not like you have to run to the spa right now. I made a reservation for 2 p.m. so we can spend time together. Okay. She nodded. You're very thoughtful. Thank you. When she kissed my cheek, I thought I could smell sailors in her breath. What a lying little fool. Well, why don't you get cleaned up and we'll go to breakfast? 
I got out of bed as she sat up. Then she got out of bed, grabbed her purse, and went to the bathroom. I knew what she was up to, but I didn't want to make her suspicious. So I went to look out the window and saw a curious sight. Anthony was sitting by the pool, chatting with a couple of young women looking at his phone. Then I saw him typing and suddenly put his phone away. She must have told him about my unexpected gift, but he didn't seem too upset about it. His attention soon returned to the two women, and they seemed to be laughing merrily at something one of them had said. Then he made a gesture with his hand, and the three of them walked out of my sight. It occurred to me that maybe Anthony was making backup plans, in case Shannon couldn't make it to have a little fun, after lunch. That could prove to be very helpful. About an hour later, Shannon and I were standing at the buffet table filling our plates. More specifically, I was filling my plate, and she had fruit and coffee. Not hungry, baby. Are you on your period? I asked. Yeah, I guess so. I don't feel like eating at all. She looked away. I couldn't help but wonder what Anthony had written in his message because it seemed to bother her. It didn't matter, though, because my plan seemed to have had the desired effect on them, or at least on her. After breakfast, we decided to take a walk on the beach and look at the ocean. I brought my camera with me and took pictures of the beach, the palm trees, and Shannon. She would smile politely and I would make remarks like how beautiful she was and what a great mom she would be. Then she would flinch, uncertainty and guilt appearing on her face. What's wrong, baby? Are you okay? I knew she was starting to. Not me with guilt. No, I'm fine. Just a little tired. Do you mind if I go back to the room and take a nap before hitting the spa? Sure. No problem. I know it's no fun being on vacation and having your period at the same time. Go lie down. And after your spa treatments, I'll be waiting for you in your room. I'm sure it will do you good. She turned and walked back towards the spa without even kissing me goodbye. Oh well. I'll be blowing her off for a long time to come. All that's left is to find Anthony and make him pay. As I continued walking down the beach, immersed in my thoughts, I saw two couples walking towards me in the women I recognized, the ones I had talked to Anthony in the morning. Now they were with two huge guys who looked like they could be Vikings defenders. As I got closer, I started to hear their conversation. Come on, baby, don't be like that. You knew Dave and I wanted to go fishing, and they had two spots available. We'll be back before dinner. Sure. It's just you guys can go and do what you want while we're stuck here at the hotel. Babe, there are plenty of things you could do here. Go into town and go shopping. Hang out by the pool or on the beach. Heck, you could even use the gym they have here. Are you saying I'm fat? You should be talking. No, babe, that's not what I meant. It's just that you could do a lot of things here. That's all. I realized he was losing it as they passed me on their way back to the resort. But he continued to persevere, but to no avail. After wandering around the beach for a while, I decided to go back and try to figure out what the boy in love was up to. I feared that Shannon had missed her spa visit and was with him, but if that was the case, I might be able to get some more videos of them together. I wandered around the spa for over an hour, and then found myself outside Anthony's room. There were voices coming from inside, but not Shannon's voice. I carefully prepared my camera and moved closer to the window. It was very risky, as it was daytime, and there could be a lot of people walking by who could see me. I decided it would be best to set up the camera on the ledge of the window, facing the room, and leave it to record on its own with the camera set up. I walked down the walkway and found a spot from where I could watch the door and see who was coming out. Time stretched slowly, but my patience were rewarded. The two women I had seen with Anthony this morning at the pool, and then on the beach with those two guys, came out of his room. They were smiling and giggling as if they knew some inside joke. As soon as they were out of sight, I went and got my camera and headed back to the room. Shannon wouldn't be back from her spa treatments until an hour later, so I had time to review what I had recorded. As soon as I got back to the room, I pulled out my laptop and downloaded all the videos I had recorded since we arrived. Most of it was dedicated to Shannon, but then I reviewed what I had just recorded of the two girls being in his room. It looked like they had found something to do while their boyfriends were off deep-sea fishing. Anthony convinced them to do a double team with him. And then another idea hit me. 
if I could get the timing right. I'd go home, and Shannon would stay here trying to figure out what the heck had happened. I knew she'd probably try to give me water again tonight, so I'd repeat the performance and let her think I was knocked out. Then, with any luck, she'd meet Anthony at the bar, dance and have a drink, and then go back to her room. If I managed to slip one pill into each of their drinks at the very end of the night at the bar, they'd be passed out by the time they got to his room. The timing had to be perfect, but in life, you can rarely plan perfectly. The second part of the plan was to record Anthony's latest conquests on the VCR. I have to say, I was a little jealous of the jerk, and that he was able to convince two very pretty women. I had a few DVR discs and made two copies of his day's exploits. Now, it was just a matter of figuring out which rooms to leave them in. I also made a copy of everything I had recorded up to that point on another DVR to back me up. I went down to the front desk and was able to send the disc to my brother Frank's house with a note asking him not to play it, or let anyone know that I had sent it to him. This was in case my plan failed, or Shannon and Anthony found out what I was up to and wanted to do me some bodily harm if I was destroyed. At least the disc I sent to my brother would show the authorities who was behind it. Checking the time, I saw that Shannon was due to finish work at the spa soon, so I decided to take a walk around the resort to find out what rooms those two women and their boyfriends were staying in. I'm sure their boyfriends would be interested to know what they were doing while deep-sea fishing. Soon, I saw the two women I was looking for, walking away from the pool, both holding towels. As I followed them, I realized they were heading to their rooms, and sure enough, I saw that they went into separate rooms next to each other. That saved me from one part of my plan. Now, if everything coincided, and Shannon and Anthony followed the same pattern as the night before, I could completely screw up the rest of the trip by tomorrow morning. I went back to the room to call the airline to find out when the earliest flight for the next morning would be. The most I was able to find out was 10 a.m., which was later than I had hoped, but I booked my ticket anyway. I then went back to the front desk and informed them that my wife and I had to leave the next morning for family reasons, and that we would be leaving at 8 a.m. They sympathized and wished me the best. I thanked them and returned to the room. I was now firmly committed to my plan no matter what. If things didn't go as I hoped, I would still jump on a plane in the morning and be home before Shannon. At least I'd be able to mess her up before she got back. But if by some miracle things went according to plan, she'd be stuck here for a few days, maybe weeks before she got home, and that would give me time to really screw her over. The plan was pretty simple. First, let Shannon think her water plan worked and pretend to fall asleep so she and Anthony could spend the evening together. Second, I'll head to the bar again, watching them and waiting for the opportune moment to slip the stuff Shannon tried to use on me into their drinks. If I time it right they should pass out right before they get to his room, or as soon as they're in it again. The timing should be perfect. Third, once they're in the room, I'll get in there. Move Shannon back to our room, and then go back and take everything Anthony had from him. I started taking off his wallet, cash, passport, credit cards, clothes, everything he took with him on the trip. Then I found the rooms of the two women Anthony had been doing it with earlier in the day and slipped the DVR discs under their door, hoping one of their boyfriends would see them first and play them back. I'm sure they wouldn't be too happy to see what their girlfriends had been up to while they were out. Anthony's room number is clearly labeled on the video, so I'm sure they'll have no problem finding it. Fifth, due to Shannon, what I did to Anthony take everything she took with her on the trip and leave her with just the clothes on her back in her purse. I would leave a little note in her empty purse so she would know who was to blame. So everything was ready, and now all I had to do was wait for the players to do their thing. Shannon returned to the room at half past 5 p.m., looking more relaxed and radiant than ever before. It pains me to think that she had ruined our marriage and that I would never be with this beautiful woman again. Stu, thank you so much for the spa day. It was amazing. I feel like a brand new woman. She was really glowing. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. When I first told you about it, you didn't show much enthusiasm. But I'm so glad you liked it. I just wanted to show you how much I love you. I saw her flinch again, but I also saw tears flow from her eyes. Thank you again. I loved it, and I love you. 
This time, she said it with much more conviction and feeling. Any time, babe. We have dinner reservations for seven tonight. Let's get some rest, and then we'll get ready for dinner. She nodded and went into the bathroom, bringing her purse with her. A few minutes later, she came out with two bottles of water and held one out to me. Here, drink this. I want to go dancing tonight, so you better start moisturizing now. She winked at me. Okay, just let me go to the bathroom first. I giggled. Once inside, I did the same procedure as before. I emptied the bottle, then filled it with water from one of the ones on the counter. I flushed the toilet to make it look like it was time for me to go and return to the bedroom. I continued to drink the water, and after fifteen minutes, I began to feign sleep. Soon, I was snoring, pretending to be asleep, and watching Shannon start to get ready for her last date with Anthony. Even though she didn't know it, she went into the bathroom and started to take a shower. I quickly got out of bed and grabbed her phone to see what her lover had texted her. Shannon can't get out this afternoon. Stu bought me a spa package. Can't say no to that. I have other plans for today. Are we still on for today, Shannon? Oh, yeah. After reading that crap, I wasn't as pissed off anymore since I knew the end was near. Now all I had to do was follow them to the bar, watch them dance for a few hours, and then slip them a drink. Easy. Well, maybe not so much. I rummaged through her purse and found the key card to Anthony's room. I slipped it into my pocket and put everything in its place. Shannon took a little more time to collect herself, and then she did something completely unexpected. She crouched down on the bed next to me and gently touched my cheek. Baby, after this week, I'm going to be all yours. I swear I just need to get this out of my head before we start a family. I wish I could tell you that you would understand me, but I have to do this. These few days are for me. I wish I could tell you, but I know you'll leave me. And I need you right now more than you know. I love you so much, but I really need to do this. I really do love you very much. Do? At first, I thought she had guessed I was awake, but then I realized she was trying to ease her guilt. But it was a little too late. Soon, she was already dressed and out the door as soon as the door closed. I was already out of bed, dressed, and keeping up with her. They ended up back at the same bar as last night. It was more crowded than the night before, and I even saw two women and their beach boys. If my plan worked, they wouldn't be together until the next morning. I found myself in the same spot as the night before. Made myself as comfortable as possible, and with my trusty camera, began recording the events of the evening. The evening went just as I had predicted, and soon the two of them were both sitting at a table, just talking and laughing. It was getting late, and I realized that the time was approaching when I would need to get them drinks. I quickly headed towards the bar, making sure neither of them saw me. Once there, I found an empty seat next to where the waitresses were placing and receiving drink orders. Taking a seat, I ordered a beer, keeping my eyes on the two of them to make sure they didn't notice me. As I watched them, I noticed a waitress stopping by their table to take their drink orders. After receiving their orders, she immediately went back to the bar and told the bartender what she needed. I was lucky that it was her only order. I listened to what she told the bartender, and then, when he went to place the drink order, I called another bartender over and ordered the exact same drinks. The first bartender put the drinks on the waitress tray. She was distracted talking to the other waitress. The drinks were brought to me. I paid for them then took one shot glass, and holding it away from the edge of the bar, broke open one of the capsules and added it to the drink, stirring the powder into it to help it mix. It fizzed a little, but seemed fine after mixing with the drink. I did the same with the second capsule and was ready to transition, taking a drink in each hand. I began to squeeze past the waitress, keeping my body between her and the bar in time to switch. I was fast, and luckily the bar was crowded enough that no one noticed me do it. I passed the waitress and turned to take the drinks to the happy couple. I just as quickly left the bar and returned to my spot outside to watch and wait. The waitress brought their drinks and I watched the scene, hoping I had picked the right moment. It was just over 1 a.m., so if it worked out the way I hoped it would, they'd be walking around until 1.01 a.m. or so. That fit perfectly with the rest of my plan. All that was left was to finish their drinks and get back to Anthony's room before they passed out. They sat there sipping their drinks, and I started to get nervous. 
What if they didn't finish their drinks? Anthony then leaned over and said something to Shannon. She smiled, and both of them quickly finished what was left of their drinks and left the bar. Thank God I moved quickly behind them, as they seemed to be in a hurry to get back to the room. This time, I noticed that Shannon had started to stumble and seemed to be having trouble walking. Anthony took her hand and put his arm around her neck and supported her. By the time they got to his room, Anthony was starting to stagger a bit as well. By the time they got to his door, she could barely stand on her feet, and he was getting more and more wobbly. He fumbled for the key card, and after a few feeble attempts, he was able to open the door and staggered into the room. The door closed. I waited a few minutes, then retrieved the key card I had taken from Shannon's purse and unlocked the door. As I entered the room, I heard Anthony's voice. What's wrong with you, babe? You didn't drink that much. He was speaking slurred, and I realized that he was going to be hung over very soon as I entered the room. I saw Shannon lying face down on the bed, unconscious. Anthony was shaking her, trying to wake her up. Come on, baby. Time to do things. He looked over and saw me coming in. Hey, who are you? He started to straighten up and almost fell over. I'm just her husband, loser. Why don't you be a good boy and pass out so I can get her out of here? As if on cue, he slowly collapsed to the floor and didn't move. Moving closer to the bed, I started looking for his cell phone, which was lying on the floor next to him, taking it in my hands. I wanted to see what he had on there in the form of messages and pictures. Soon, I was flipping through hundreds of pictures, most of which were innocent enough, but then I discovered that he hadn't paid. He had a folder with dozens of images of women. Most of the women I didn't recognize, but I did find a few pictures of Shannon as I continued to look through the pictures. I recognized some of them as female teachers at the same school Shannon taught at, as well as the wives of several male teachers. Well, that's interesting. Anthony seems to be quite the player when it comes to other men's wives. This was going to come to a very ugly end. I went through his contact list and decided that these photos, in addition to those of my soon-to-be ex-wife, should be available to all the people on his list. It took me a few minutes to tag and send all those photos to all those people, which included the husbands of the wives he had photographed. When he returned home, he was in for an unpleasant surprise. I sent the photos and videos of Shannon to her phone and then from her phone to mine. I later used them for my own purposes. Blackmail, you might say. After turning off his phone, I started gathering all of his belongings, clothes, toiletries, and other items that he had taken with him on the trip, and just carelessly stuffed them into a suitcase. I also went through his pockets and took all of his cash, wallet, credit cards, driver's license, and passport. I knew it would be very difficult for him to leave the island without his passport. After finishing filling his suitcase, I turned my attention to Shannon. She was still lying face down on the bed with one leg hanging over the side. I very carefully rolled her over onto her back, then picked her up in my arms and carried her to my room. There I put her on our bed and went back to the loser's room to get all of his stuff. I kept his phone, wallet, and cash as I felt I should get some sort of compensation for it. After looking around his room, I made sure he had nothing to take with him. I even took the shoes he was wearing, and on the way back to the room, I found a trash can at the resort and dumped his suitcase and shoes in there covering them with trash so they wouldn't be discovered. Once back in the room, I started packing my suitcase as well as Shannon's suitcase, whose belongings I treated with the same carries, Anthony's. I was only going to leave her there with her clothes, purse, and an empty wallet that only contained the note I had left behind. As I finished packing, I noticed that it was four in the morning, and I needed to be at the airport by nine since Shannon had finished drinking around two in the morning. She would be unconscious until at least noon. Anthony, I suspected, would arrive sometime around ten in the morning, and I'd be able to leave before either of them woke up. There was one more thing to do as I left the room. I grabbed the two DVR discs I had created earlier and headed straight for the rooms where the two women and their boyfriends were staying. Very quietly and quickly, I slid the disc under the door of each of them and then went back to my room. There I looked at a peacefully sleeping Shannon lying on the bed, and I was overcome with a feeling of immense loss and sadness. 
I wanted so badly to start a family with her, but she had other plans, and I couldn't forgive her. Going around the room, I made sure I had packed everything. Then I picked up Shannon's suitcase and went back to the same dumpster where I had thrown Anthony's suitcase and her vipers back in the room. I went through Shannon's purse to make sure it was emptied and there was no money, credit cards, or passport in it. I wanted to make sure it would be as difficult for her to get home as it was for Anthony. Taking a seat on one of the two chairs in the room, I sank, exhausted to the floor, but immediately thought about what I would do next once I was home. First, I will empty our bank accounts and pay off, and then cancel all of our credit cards. Then, I would pack up everything I own and move it out of our house. I was sure I would have to find a storage unit to house it all, but I didn't care. I just wanted out. Out of our house and out of this sham marriage. Before I knew it, I was dozing off. And when I woke up, it was almost seven in the morning, getting up from the chair I was sleeping in. I walked over to the bed, looked at Shannon, and then gently picked her up in my arms and carried her out of the room. I walked down to the pool and left Shannon on one of the lounge chairs, since I was checking out. I didn't want her there when they came to clean the room and get it ready for the next guests. Back in the room, I grabbed my bags and looked around one last time to make sure I had everything before I left. I still had Anthony's phone, but then an idea hit me. I walked back to the pool and picked up Shannon's phone. I started sending out all these pictures and videos to everyone on her contact list, with a few exceptions. She had a few nieces and nephews who were too young to see these things, but I was sure her mother, father, sisters, and co-workers would find them interesting. I walked up to the front desk and asked for a piece of duct tape. I took the battery out of her phone, put a very small piece of duct tape over the contacts, and then put the battery back in place. It would look like her battery was dead. I also made sure she didn't have a cord to charge her phone with. No money. It would take her a while to get the phone to work. It was about 8 a.m. when I heard yelling and screaming. It was the boyfriend of one of the two women I saw Anthony with yesterday. Apparently, their ex-boyfriends had watched the video. I slipped under their door. You fool. You can tell your family that the wedding is off, and I don't want to see you anymore. You can find your own way home, jerk. One guy was yelling at his girlfriend. The other guy just stared at him with a stony expression while his girlfriend pleaded with him. Baby, please don't leave me, I said. I'm sorry. It was a very stupid mistake. And besides, you got back at him. She cried. You're a cheater. Go back to your new boyfriend. But I don't think things are going to get any better from here on out. He said it so coldly that I shuddered with fear. I wonder what they did to poor old Anthony. Well, I guess I'll never know. The next sound I heard was the siren of an ambulance stopping in front of the house. The superintendent came out of his office, I realized, and quickly led the paramedics down the walkway to Anthony's room. I really hoped he was okay. As people began to gather around to see what was causing such excitement, I calmly called a cab and headed to the airport. Turning on my phone, I noticed that I had a voicemail message, calling up the voicemail. I listened to my brother Frank's message. Stu, what the heck is going on over there? I got a bunch of pictures of Shannon. What's going on? Do you know about this? Call me when you get this message. When I got to the airport and was waiting to board the plane, I called him back and explained the whole situation. How Shannon was having fun with Anthony while we were on vacation, and how she was trying to get pregnant by him. My brother was shocked and thought I was kidding at first, but then I told him to watch the video more carefully. He said he was very sorry for what happened and that if I needed anything to call him. I thanked him, hung up, and soon found myself flying home alone. Turning on Anthony's phone as soon as I landed, I found a dozen voicemails and over 30 texts threatening to do him bodily harm. Apparently the pictures and videos I'd sent weren't popular. After picking up my stuff, I took my car out of the long-term parking lot and drove home. As I drove home, I started planning what to do next. Divorce was one option, but I knew she would get half of everything, and that didn't suit me. She cheats and still gets it in the divorce. It didn't seem fair. As I drove, another plan started to form in my head, and I began to mentally make a list of what I would need and how to do it. She had ruined our marriage, and I was going to make her life a living heck. 
When I got home, I called my brother and asked if he could help me move my stuff out of the house over the next few days. I wanted to get it done before Shannon returned so she would come home to an empty house. I finally turned on my phone and found over 20 voicemails and over a dozen texts. Many were from Shannon's sister, asking me what was going on and why Shannon wasn't returning her calls. Some were from other members of Shannon's family asking basically the same questions. I was pleased that there were no voicemails or texts from Shannon herself. That meant that her phone wasn't working and she probably hadn't yet realized what had happened. I smiled as I imagined her finally getting her phone working and then seeing all the text and voice messages asking about the pictures and videos she had sent from her phone. She was in for a very unpleasant surprise. The first thing I did was cancel all of our credit cards and transfer all of the money from our joint bank account to my personal account. Then I started packing up all my clothes and other personal items. I wanted to keep all the gifts Shannon had brought me over the years were going in the trash. Unless they were worth something, then I would either sell them online or find a pawn shop. My home phone was disconnected as soon as I got home, so anyone who tried to contact me had to call my cell phone. It was about 11 p.m. when I finally looked at my phone and saw several messages and voicemails from Shannon. It looked like she was able to get her phone working again. The first few messages were, Where are you? Why did you leave and leave me here? Are you okay? I think I've been robbed. Then the tone of the messages changed when it got to her. What had happened? And I'm sure she received many texts and voicemails about the photos that were sent out from her phone to everyone on her contact list. Why? Why did you do this to me? Couldn't we have talked first? I just ignored the rest of her messages, figuring it would only upset her more. The next day was very stressful. I had no idea when Shannon would be able to get home, so I had to act fast. First, I went box shopping to pack up the rest of my belongings and rent a large enough storage unit. Then I went to the bank and made sure there wasn't much money left in our joint account. I transferred the rest to my business account which I was going to close. Take the money and run away. But I still had some things to do before I could leave for good. The house we lived in was very small. We decided to start small, and when our family grew, we would buy a bigger house. It was a simple two-bedroom with two bedrooms, a small bathroom, and a small kitchen. Nothing special. And I had a home remodeling business, and we were really hoping to turn this house into something special. Now, I had other plans for it, and I was thrashing around town, gathering everything I needed to make Shannon's arrival at the house one she would never forget. Since I was in the remodeling business, I knew a thing or two about construction load-bearing walls, and so on. Armed with this knowledge, I was about to embark on an extreme remodeling of our house, just not in the traditional way. Later that morning, my brother Frank showed up with his pickup truck, and after discussing my situation, we started loading his truck with all my stuff. It took over five hours and three trips to the storage unit, but by the evening of that day, I was officially moved in. I didn't bother to tell Frank about my plans for the house or the surprise Shannon had in store for me. I knew he would try to talk me out of it, so I never told him about it. He did, however, ask what my plans were for the near future just to get out of town and put this nightmare marriage behind me. I'm not going to file for divorce, but I won't be here when she comes back. She can have the house as far as I'm concerned, but that's all she'll get from me. Frank just shook his head. You know that won't work. She'll just hire a lawyer and track you down. Just get it over with and divorce that cheating jerk. If you try to run, it will only make it worse, when she catches up with you. I understand that you are angry and hurt, but don't let your emotions make your decisions for you. Pull yourself together. Get a lawyer and give her half. No. That jerk cheated on me and tried to have a baby with that loser. And then was going to pass it off as mine. She doesn't deserve anything. And that's exactly what she's going to get. See, I'm not going to divorce her. Oh no. I'm just going to leave her with no money in the bank. And with all her dirty laundry on display, Frank knew it was useless to try to change my mind. I tend to be stubborn, and there's little that can change my mind when I'm in this state. He left, but not before telling me to think it over and not to do anything rash. I had thought it over from the moment I saw her kissing her lover. Now, it was time to put my plan into action. 
I started work on the house that night, and worked until morning. I still didn't know when Shannon would be back, so I had to work fast. One thing that played in my favor was the snow. It looked like another big storm was coming, which had forced the closure of several major airports. Flights back and forth would be cancelled, giving me more time to put the finishing touches on my remodeling project. Another positive side to this storm is the extra 8 to 12 in of snow it brought. There was still a foot layer of snow on the ground and roofs, which would have helped my plan come to fruition. Since I had only been back for two days, I rarely answered the phone since I saw that most of the calls were from Shannon. I finally decided to take her call, but only to get some information out of her. Nothing more. Baby, please listen. It was a mistake. Just a huge, stupid mistake on my part. I didn't mean for things to get this far. I'll do whatever it takes. But please forgive me. I could hear her crying, but it had no effect on me. I wanted nothing more to do with her. But at the moment, I needed to act calm, to give her a little hope, and then snatch it out of her hands at the right moment. Shannon, you have hurt me in a way that is as deep as anyone has ever hurt me. I don't know if I can forgive you or trust you again. I just want to know why. Why did you do this to me? To us? Don't you love me? Am I not enough for you? I spoke calmly, but with a hint of sadness in my voice. I actually wanted to scream into the phone that she was just a cheater and a fool, that I never wanted to see again. I had to let her know that we had a chance to be together again. Baby, please let me explain. It meant nothing, and he meant nothing. You mean everything to me. You are my life, my reason for living. Please, O oh God, forgive me. She burst into tears. I waited a few minutes, and then I said, Baby, I just don't know. I loved you, but you broke my heart. I don't think we can fix it. No, baby, we can fix it. And we'll have an even stronger love, an even stronger bond between us, if we can get through this. Please, baby, can you at least wait until I get home so we can talk? I could hear the desperation in her voice. I don't know. When are you coming back? Well, there's one problem. I don't have a passport or a plane ticket. My sister is transferring money to me right now since all my credit cards were stolen. By the way, please call the credit card companies and ask them to cancel my cards immediately. Amazing how she went from pleading to take her back to asking them to cancel her credit cards. What a piece of work. Okay, I'll do it right now. So you don't know when you'll be home. In a few days. I think I talked to the U.S. consulate here and they're going to make me a new passport. Well, call me when you're getting ready to leave. Okay. I will still. Yes, I love you. I'll see you when you get home. I hung up so she wouldn't be back for a few more days. Great, I thought. That'll give me enough time to make sure all the home improvement stuff is done, and I can do a few things to help me start my new life without her. The next day, Frank called to see how I was doing and invited me over for dinner. I accepted since I hadn't had a home-cooked meal in over a week. I was living on pizza and Chinese food, and after I finished talking to Frank, I assured him that I wasn't going to do anything rash. Then, Shannon called. Hey babe, I just found out that I'm getting a new passport in a couple days. Now all I need is a plane ticket home. I'll be able to fly in a few days, and if I catch an early flight, I'll be home sometime in the late afternoon. Will you meet me at the airport? I really want us to talk as soon as possible. That's not a good idea, Shannon. You should have your sister pick you up and bring you home. We can talk when you get here. I just led her along behind me by the time she got home. I'd be at least 100 miles away from her. Okay, baby. I love you. And I know that if you give me a chance, we'll get through this. Okay. Do. Yeah. Sure. We'll talk, and then we'll see. I'm not promising anything. I lied as much as she lied to me. I now had an idea of when she would be home, which gave me enough time to do a few more things to cover my tracks when I left town. First, I sold my truck that I drove to work, and bought another truck, used and in good condition, but registered it in a friend's name. Second, I had to inform the guys who worked for me that I was going out of business because of my impending divorce. I apologized for warning them about it, but I couldn't leave without telling them what happened and why. I then called an old friend from college who now lives in Colorado. When we graduated from college, he said I should come and do business with him there. 
He said that since there were all winter homes and summer homes there, we would have year-round jobs. He was glad to hear from me, but was surprised at what had happened between me and Shannon, as he had known her when we were dating and always thought we were perfect for each other. I asked if his college offer still stood, or if he needed a really good handyman. He said that he had more work now that the laws had changed regarding marijuana, and that his workload had tripled in the last year, and I would be very happy to come and work for him. I asked if it could be done unofficially, as I wanted Shannon not to find out where I had gone, and that she wouldn't get any money from me. Everything was set, and all I had to do was leave. Shannon called me several times a day to let me know that she loved me, and asked me to forgive her. She also let me know daily when she was coming home, and that I would be in better shape when she returned. The day came when she was due home. I packed up my new truck, and the house was cleared of all my belongings. Everything that was left belonged to Shannon, or didn't care about me. I left very early in the morning, as I wanted to get out of town without anyone noticing anything. I asked the neighbor across the street to do me a favor and write down when Shannon was coming home. I told him I would call and let him know what time she would be home, since I had a surprise for her. He had no idea what was going on and that she and I were having marital problems. He happily agreed and said he would wait for my call the next day. Everything was ready to go. As I drove out of town and headed south to my new life without Shannon, it would take me at least two days of driving to get to my friend's house, and Shannon would be home by then. As I drove, I felt less angry and more peaceful than I had in the past week. Ever since I had seen Shannon and Anthony together at the pool, I felt like my life had been flushed down the toilet, and now I was starting to pull myself out of that cesspool of despair. Around noon, Shannon called and said she would be home tomorrow around four in the afternoon. She asked again if I would come pick her up at the airport, but I told her I had some things to do and that I would be home after her. She could just let me in when she got there. I then called my neighbor and asked him to be on standby with a video camera to film the surprise I had in store for my wife. The next day, I was in Colorado and only an hour away from my friend's house when I got a call from Shannon. The house, it just collapsed, probably because of the snow. I had just put the key in the door and turned it when I heard a huge crack in the roof fell in. Oh my God, our house is gone, she cried. Shannon, don't worry. I'm sure your parents are still waiting for you in your room. As for me, I've already made other arrangements, I said cheerfully. What are you talking about? Our house is gone. How can you be so happy about that? Now she was starting to get angry. Good. My remodeling went exactly as I planned. I rigged the house to collapse in on itself when she opened the door. I installed temporary braces in the basement and then cut all the posts in the floor with a chainsaw. The lock on the front door was wired to a switch that turned on a winch. I bought at a pawn shop for a very cheap price. Then, with a pulley and ropes attached to temporary braces, she turned the key, turned on the winch, and our house came down. You see, my dear, our house didn't just collapse on itself because of the snow, but I had a hand in it. You see, I did to our house what you did to our marriage. Good luck finding a new place to live. As for me... I'm almost to my new home. At that point, I left her and called my neighbor. Still, you won't believe what just happened. Your house just collapsed. It probably couldn't handle all that snow, but I guess there wasn't much of it. At least not enough to do that much damage. I videotaped the whole thing. And thankfully, your wife is okay. She was trying to open the door when it happened, and then like, bang, and she just fell on top of herself. He was so excited. I asked him to email me the video when he had a chance, and I wanted to keep a copy of it. After talking to him, I disconnected my phone and continued on my way to my new life. Epilogue It's been almost three years now, and I've settled into a comfortable life here in Colorado. I keep in touch with a few friends in Minnesota and keep up with what's going on. I didn't want to contact family members directly, as I was sure they would let Shannon know where I was living. It seems Shannon got her wish and was pregnant with Anthony's baby for a while. She told everyone that he was mine and I couldn't be a father and would run away like a coward. Even my mother believed her because she wanted a grandchild. I contacted a friend who, in turn contacted my brother and told him to get Shannon to do a DNA test on the baby 
and my brother. If I was a distant relative, I would have a close match with my brother. If I wasn't distant, there would be no match. Like an idiot, she agreed. The results came back, and my mother kicked her out of the house, yelling at her to never show up on the doorstep with that child of hers. As for Anthony, it seems he took quite a beating from those two guys at the resort and was in the hospital for over a week before he could get home. When he finally made it home, there were several other gentlemen, or should I say ex-husbands, waiting for him to add what those two guys didn't add. He has since left town for parts unknown, but rumor has it that he can't do it anymore. Looks like his days as a player are over. <laughs>